Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at a simple click data logging. And this is going to be using Node-RED SQL database. And we will be looking at simple logging using a click PLC with an Ethernet port. Node-RED will be used to communicate to the controller via Modbus TCP protocol. Information collected and then stored into a SQL Lite SQL database and a Raspberry Pi single board computer will be used for the Node-RED collecting and storing. The update time will be two uh, will be two times a second or 500 milliseconds. This method is, is ideal for quickly determining how things are operating. Analysis or display of the information will be done via a spreadsheet and the spreadsheet will be run on our Windows 10 computer. So detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start your video one. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So the first thing we'll do is take a look at the Click PLC logging program. And this is a simple logging program because all the data that will be logged is coming from the Click PLC only. And the information is stored in the following memory locations. You see DS1, which is a year. DS2, month, day, hour, minute, and second up to DS6. Then we have an analog value. Then we have a timer, a counter, and any, and we put an extra uh, register in here just for um, any additional purposes that we want to set up. So the actual program itself, you see here that we're actually just moving the uh, real-time clock, four-digit year, into DS1. Next, what we do is we take the month and day in, in the SD21 and SD22 and store them in DS2 and 3. And then we take the hour, minute, and second from DS24 to DS26 and store it at DS4 to DS6. So that gives me my seconds. Then we take our analog value and we multiply this by 100 and, uh, on DF1 and store it as DS7. So we, our value here will be 0 to 5,000. So if we take a look quickly at the analog, you can see under setup, we go to system configuration. And under system configuration, you will see here, here's our analog coming in, 0 to 5 volt and the input range is 0 to 5. It's going to be, we enable our scaling, which is 0, 0.0 to 50.0, and we put a DF1. So in order to get that right scaling, then what we'll do is put that uh, multiply by 100, so it'd be 0 to 5,000 coming in from our Modbus location. So that's how we do that and scale that value. Next, we're going to have a self-resetting timer here in DS8, and what it's doing is it's counting in milliseconds here, so 5,000 milliseconds or five seconds, and then it's gonna reset itself. We take the current value of that uh, timer and we put it in DS8. Next, what we do is we have a self-resetting counter and we're moving that to DS9. So basically we have a um, set point of 9,999 and as our timer here expires, um, we count up to 9,999, and if that comes on, we reset it back to zero again. So this is how many times we have counted to the five seconds. As you see, as soon as we hit five seconds, it increments by one. Then we move the actual current counter value into DS9. And that is our end of our program. So that is all of our program that we do. And if we look at our log data, it comes as just DS1 to DS10. And to look at the Modbus address for this, we call it the Modbus address and we call it DS. And you can see there's DS1 to DS10. And if we say display the Modbus, you'll see it's uh, 40,000 or 400,001 all the way up to 400,010. And the four represents that it's a read write on the holding registers. So that's our information you can see here as the year, month, day, hour, minute, second analog here. Then we have our um, timer, our counter, and then an external uh, extra bit here, extra register. So let's take a look actually at the hardware right now. So our hardware, what we have is our Click Plus PLC and it's connecting uh, to our computer via the Wi-Fi because you see no uh, cable connected here and we are running our program. And then we have a Raspberry Pi 
which is right over here. This is the Raspberry Pi 4 Model B. So it's a it's the top of the line. It's very quick and still only less than $100. And then we have our battery right here going to our uh, analog that we've done before. So as you can see, if I were to change that analog value, then the corresponding information changes um, in that register that represents the analog. So we'll stop right there. And now you'll see that right now it's reading uh, 4046. So that is our Click PLC program and hardware that we have. Next, what we'll do is take a look at the SQLite SQL database setup that we are going to be doing. So right now we look at the Raspberry Pi and the Pi and we set up a Pi share. And in there, we're going to create a database here called Pi Click that we've used SQLite Studio to actually uh, uh, make. So here is our SQLite Studio, and we've done this before in a previous post, and you'll see links in the description below. So in here, we have one table that's called data, and under that data, we have seven columns, and those columns are ID, which is a integer, and it's set as a primary key, so it's only one uh, value per that. And if we look at it, if you look at a configure, we have an auto increment here. So it's automatically going to increment. I like using ID keys with auto increment mainly because we can sort the data relatively easy for every record that we have. And in this case here, that's exactly what we're going to be doing. Okay. So let me just cancel that one. Then you can see here that we have our date, which is a text, our time, which is text. So we're separating the date and time. And we have our analog integer. And this is a uh, assigned integer. So we have plus and minus, or, or we have the decimal places here. And then we have timer, a counter, and we have that extra uh, register that we have here. So that is our uh, SQLite Studio uh, database, and it's all set to go. So let's just uh, um, now call up. Let's close that down. So there is our uh, Pi Click database that we have here. Next, after we do that, then we're looking at our, we'll look at our red node red click logging program. So here we go here, and here is our logging program that we have, and it looks very it looks kind of complicated, but it's really quite simple. You'll see that when you're dealing with node red, you're dealing with a flow, and the flow starts with either an injection. In this case here, we have a timestamp, but we can do anything. It goes into a function key or a function setup. Using a Modbus Flex Getter, we go grab the information, then we print our response here. Then we go to our message payload, which will be, be displayed here. Then we go to, after we get the information from the Flex Getter, we go to a function node, and our function node then sets up our parameters to actually inject using SQL commands into our um, SQLite uh, function right here. And then we have a message payload, and it'll show us the, the output. So that's a very straightforward uh, way of doing it. Now, the nodes that we're gonna actually be using under here, if you go to uh, Manage Palette, we have a couple of different nodes, and that first one is the Node Red Contribute Modbus. So we need that one, and that adds our uh, Modbus nodes to our, our palette. And the other one that we need, besides the, the essential one, is our um, node red, node SQ light, which is right here. So they're the two that we just hit install. We can search for them and install them if they're not already installed. And you'll notice here on the left hand side, you will see that we have our um, our units here under storage. We have our SQL light node, and then under Modbus, we have all of these other Modbus. And in this case here, we're using the Modbus Flex Getter to actually read the, the data. So let's go back to this. Let's go back to this and uh, the timestamp we'll discuss afterwards. Now, the first thing we have is a function. And in that function, it sets up our parameters to do our Modbus read. And our Modbus read, we use function code three. We use, use unit ID number one. Our address is zero. And our, qual our quantity is going to be 10. So we're going to read 10 registers. Basically, 
um, in the holding register area, starting at zero going to 10, or zero to nine, or one to 10. So this matches our, our DS numbers one to DS10. And once we have that, we get to use our Modbus Flex Scanner. We, we set up our server called Click Plus. And in there, we set up our parameters for our Click Plus. It's a Modbus TCP. Its uh, host is 192, 168, 1, 130. Default port's 502. So that's all set up. And then we have a response here that will show us the data as it comes in. Then we have a function key here to set up what our SQL commands going into our database. So if we look at those function commands, you'll see that we have a, a topic. We're going to insert into data, which is our table. We're going to insert the, the date, time, analog, timer, counter, and the extra uh, register that we have. And the values are going to be the year, which is data zero coming in from our Modbus message response month and day, and you'll notice that we have a zero plus the, the day, and then we do a uh, slice minus two. So this ensures that we always have two digits available to us to put into our database. So that is our time or our date. And then we have a time on three, four, and five, again, using that slice information. Now all this data can be downloaded um, through the links on our website at accautomation.ca. Then we set up our, our analog. In this case here, we're going to use parse flow and we're going to divide by 100. So give us our actual true uh, scaling that we wanted from 0 to 0 0.00 to 0 or 50.00. And then on our timer, again, our timer is set up for milliseconds. So we're going to actually, it's 5,000 milliseconds. So we're going to divide by 1,000 now, give us a value in seconds. Then we have our counter, which is just straight. And then we have our extra value that we have right here. So that is our SQL command being set up to then be put into our database. And then we have our database set up and we specify where the database is. And we, we specified our home on our pie and our share. And it's called pi click db, just as we did or saw this on our network. And we're gonna do the SQL query via the message topic. So that's all set up. Now what we can do is with these message payloads actually allow us to view some of the information or this debug node will allow us to view some of the information over here on our debug in order to see what's happening. And under the Modbus Flex Getter, I've actually turned on a couple options, show activities and show errors so that we can see what's actually happening. The activity will show up here where it says connected right now and our error will show up. So the first time we do this, we're actually gonna probably get an error. And the reason why is that it has to start opening up the port and making sure the port is open. So if we look at that and sure enough, that's exactly what happens. If we look at where this error comes from, if I highlight it, you can see here, it shows it right now. And then this one here shows the error port not open. So you see it's connected. Now let's try that again and again. What will happen is now the port's open, it hasn't timed out, we can now look at the data coming in. There's our buffer and there's our information coming into our, our database that we're gonna be doing. And you can see here, it's coming actually, so the flow actually went through, saved it into our database and then put it onto our payload. Now, if we turn those off now and we go back to our timestamp, we can make this happen repeatedly on an interview or an interval. And we're going to set that interval 0 0.5 seconds. So we're going to hit done. And now we're going to deploy this into our system. There we go. And now what we're going to do is deployed. And so what we're doing is we're writing all the time now. And you can see the, the values in our Modbus response here actually being um, inputted. And you can see the seconds going. So every two times a second. So if I were to take... Uh, my pot and change it, you can see the value is increasing or I can decrease it. We'll leave it uh, 3528. There we go. So you can see that our program is operating correctly. 
So next what we'll do is actually look at the viewing of the uh, SQL database information on a spreadsheet. So here's our program running right now. And before we actually view it on a spreadsheet, what we have to do is ensure that we have the SQL drivers installed on our Windows based uh, computer. So we go to the SQLite driver, or the ODBC driver, we scroll down and um, this particular Raspberry Pi is a 32 bit. So we need the first one here of the SQLite ODBC 32 and that's our driver. Now, what I like to do is on the Windows 10, I'll just do both of them to make sure that I have the right one when I need it. So once I have that installed, then what we can do is call up our spreadsheet. In this case here, I'm using WPS Office. And what I will do is we'll just go to data right here and we'll import the data. Use ODBC and their SQLite. So we'll say okay. We'll select our database using the browse and we'll, we'll click the pie click database. Hit OK. It brings it back. We'll hit Next. Then we'll select all of the um, fields in our table. We'll hit Next. Then we're going to sort by ID and descending order. There we go. Then we're going to hit Next again. And it shows a demo of what it's going to actually look like. And then we'll just hit Finish. And when it hits Finish, it asks where we want to put it. We'll just say at A11. Hit OK. And there is our data that we have coming in every twice every second. So you can see here, there's two records and you can see the timer as it times up. So there's our information already for us. And when we have it in our data or in our spreadsheet like this, we can very easily just grab that data and we could go insert and we can make a um, a chart and we'll use this chart right here actually let's uh, uh, use this chart that's fine and you can see that it's actually going to plot this graph out for us okay. now if we don't like that chart we can always add another one let's go another one here just grab a couple of records here insert chart and then let's do a line chart this time and here we go here we can see our line chart so very easy to implement and we can use the excel to actually then um, graph the information coming back into our database so if you enjoyed this video please hit the like button below if you have any questions about the video please leave a comment below and i'll do my best to answer it if you want more information about us or you want our free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging please click on the link in the description below to get it a new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.